Hey everyone, Kyle Hamrick here. I am school. Uh, I am school. <laughs> I am senior motion designer here at School of Motion, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of cool stuff to talk about. There's actually a lot packed into uh, this episode, uh, this stream, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but before we get into any of that, uh, I have a guest today that I want to introduce here. Uh, very, very bright young man with a promising future, uh, founder of School of Motion, Mr. Joey Corenman, who, ah, <laughs> <laughs> ta-da, I needed one. Fabulous. How's it going, Joey? Uh, it's lovely in, uh, South Florida. I don't know if everyone can see on the live stream, but I have a pretty severe sunglass tan, um. I recently was at the beach, but uh, yeah, Kyle, thank you for inviting me. It's always been a lifelong dream to be on the School of Motion live stream. Um, this truly is a dream come true. Pinch me. Yeah, uh, thanks for inviting me to invite you, I guess. We should just keep this going <laughs> probably for an hour, just go back and forth with that probably. Everyone thinks it's fun, yeah, trust good. me. Good, I'm sure they do. <laughs> um, so uh, we're gonna start off with some stuff that's a little bit meta. One of the things that we're announcing today is that we're gonna be live streaming more regularly. So. It's happening right now. How about that? Yeah. So uh, for everyone who's taken a School of Motion class and is an alumni, you may recognize Kyle because Kyle's been sort of in the orbit of School of Motion for years now. He, uh, I think we met Kyle. I, I couldn't remember. I was trying to think of it this morning. We met at Adobe Video. Sounds World, right. Yeah. I think. And then at some point you took a class and then you kind of just became really active in the alumni group. You became a teaching assistant, started making content and, and teaching and stuff. And so it just made total sense to, um, to basically steal Kyle from the world uh, and make him senior motion designer at School of Motion. So now Kyle, uh, we're basically unleashing him on all of you so he can Sorry, teach you things. Yeah. And it, yeah, I, I mean, it could go either way, let's be honest. Uh, you know, but don't Google him. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's extremely knowledgeable, extremely experienced, and I'm psyched that we're finally doing this live streaming thing. I'm really excited. Cool. Uh, I'm hearing the, seeing in the chat that Joey's voice is echoing a little bit. Um, is it bad or just a little bit? Uh, let me know and I will try to address that. Uh, I've got a lot of setup going here, but this is our first time. So, um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> My voice has a natural echo. Oh so yeah. Yeah. Just... That's what it is. I don't think that my mic is picking him up, but uh, yeah, I'll try to figure it out. Um, okay, so uh, a little bit about the live streaming. Um, you know, like uh, like Joey said, uh, I'm going to be running these uh, at least for the immediate future. We may be mixing that up uh, as we get into this, but we wanted to give you more opportunities to connect with us. Um, you know, we've got courses, obviously, but uh, we also do podcasts and have a lot of tutorial content. But uh, this is, you know, maybe a good way for you to be uh, interacting with us a little more directly. And we can kind of do some stuff that's um, a little bit outside some of that other content and uh, talking to people, showing off cool stuff. So um, we're going to kind of be announcing a couple specific shows that we have planned here that will kind of be different, uh, you know, buckets for some of those uh, different ideas for us. Um, so we do have some other upcoming streams that we're going to be announcing here. Uh, we're going to be doing these on Fridays a couple times a month. Um, we're still dialing in exactly how often that means. Some of that probably depends on how you respond to this. Uh, I see quite a few watching right now, so that's good. That's a good start. Is this where you say uh, smash that subscribe yes, button? Or yeah, ring that don't, bell? don't forget okay, to it. smash all the <laughs> buttons, all the positive yeah. buttons. <clears throat> um Okay, so, oh, and one thing I want to make sure I don't forget, we are also working on some alumni exclusive streams. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it'll be coming up maybe in the next month or two. I don't want to make any promises, but uh, sometime soon. <clears throat> so one of the kind of the next part of that, which gets super meta, we want to actually introduce this show uh, that you're currently watching. This is the first episode ish of workflow show and we have this awesome intro that uh, I'm going to roll right now. And we're back. How about that? Uh, so That's gorgeous. that lovely intro that you just watched was actually created by this guy right over here. Am I pointing the right way? Yeah, there we go. Got to think backwards. It's challenging. <laughs> that guy uh, knows a thing or two about motion design. 
a thing. I wouldn't say or two. A That's thing. going overboard. Yeah, uh, at least two things. I feel like right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, this is workflow show. Welcome. Um, we're going to be talking about tools, tips, and techniques for motion design. So this is going to be kind of a home for talking about you know a cool new plugin that came out or if uh, Cinema 4D has new features in the new version or um, you know we want to check out a really cool project maybe um, uh, kind of anything that lives in that realm uh, and if you have specific suggestions for things that you want us to talk about let us know uh, you can drop those in the chat and we'll be uh, gathering those up uh, you can also send stuff like that into support uh, on the School of Motion site um, so we want your suggestions we've got plenty of our own but uh, you know we want to hear from you um, we have Ella and Brittany in the chat, and I saw quite a few of the other uh, School of Motion people hanging out in the chat, too. Um, they're going to be kind of wrangling the, uh, the chat today. Uh, we are going to be doing Q&A um, in a little bit here after some demos. So, uh, and then we'll be dropping links in the chat, so make sure you watch for those. Uh, and we'll also be doing a giveaway. What's that? A giveaway? Yes. Um, <laughs> So you need a gong. <laughs> you more gimmicks. Yeah, so many gimmicks. Um, I see that uh, you guys are very active in the chat already, which is awesome. Um, you know, if uh, if you haven't said hi already, go ahead and say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you're an alumni or a student. Um, it's uh, I recognize a ton of the names here, uh, which is awesome. So, um, and again, hit us with questions and suggestions. So um, we probably won't get to all the questions, but we'll do our best. Um, Okay, so we are going to be, uh, Joey and I are each going to do a little demo here, kind of talking about uh, the creation of this intro and some other mysterious project that we'll be revealing soon. Uh, then we'll do some Q&A time, and then we'll have some announcements after that. Uh, we're probably aiming for a, about an hour here, uh, but it's a live stream, so it's flexible, right? Um, and uh, I'm going to see if I can figure out what's up with this uh, echo in a minute here, uh, but I'm going to toss this over to Joey to talk through the creation of that workflow show intro here. Um, so Joey, take it away. Thanks, Kyle. I, I wish I had like a tie. I should dress like a newscaster or something. Um, all right, so the workflow show intro that you just watched, it's a little bit modified from the original one that, that I animated, I think like three years ago. Essentially, we had this idea of doing tutorials that were a little more like reviews or really focused on neat tools you can get from AE scripts or you know plugins for Cinema 4D, things like that. Uh, and so we came up with the name Workflow Show. I think we did two or three tutorials. You can find them on our YouTube channel. Uh, but they were so labor intensive to do that we never, we, we didn't have the bandwidth back then to consistently do it. So um, I'm first of all, I wanna say I'm really happy that Kyle's here because he's sort of taken this over and turned it into a thing that will now be recurring and it can be live and, and more interactive um, and we can react to trends and, and new things in the industry faster. So uh, when I wanted to come up with an intro for this, um, I kind of wanted to just talk through my process a little bit and show, uh, I'm going to share my screen. You'll be able to see you know, some of the behind the scenes. And again, if you have any questions, um, put them in the chat and we'll see if we can get to them at the end. So, uh, so let's start with mind mapping. All right. So uh, what you're seeing on my screen right now is called mind node. Now, this is a step that I used to skip probably for the first five or six years of my career. I would never do this when I started a project. And, uh, you know, you can do mind mapping. You can sit in a room with other creatives and brainstorm. You can pull out a journal and write whatever process you need to use to get all of the ideas out of your head. Uh, that's step one. And so, you know, when I say workflow show and it's a show about plugins and tools and tricks for motion designers, most likely everyone watching this is already sort of seeing a thing in their head, right? Like imagine if a client brought this to you and said, make me an intro for this show, you would automatically start seeing the animation play in your head because that's, that's what, the way creative brains work. The problem is that's just idea one you need to get like as many ideas out as possible and sift through them and see where there's connections to be made because that's how you get the best creative. Every studio I've ever worked at or interviewed or seen do great work, that's how they do it. It's never your first idea, it's your 10th idea. And I think it was Ariel Costa who, who said in, in a podcast that your first idea is everybody else's first idea. So you wanna like quickly get past that, don't fall in love with it and move on. So 
I use mind mapping and basically it's just free associating, right? So workflow show. Uh, if you focus on the word workflow, well, the first things that popped into my head were tools, software, techniques. And you can see those are three very boring words. It would be, you know, you could build an intro around that, but it wouldn't be very interesting. And so then I just sort of riffed off of each of these tools. Well, obviously plugins, because we're talking about motion design. And I listed out, you know, some of our buddies here. Uh, you know, I'm sure Lloyd, if he's watching, is very happy to see a scripts right at the top of this mind map. Um, I called out some specific tools, but then I said, okay, let's get a little abstract here. Tools can also be literal tools, right? Like a hammer, a screwdriver, right? I mean, you're motion designers, but you know what those things are, I hope. Um, and so it made me think of like a garage and what's in a garage. Well, there's a toolbox, there's a garage door. They can be kind of dirty, utilitarian. They're not really fancy, right? Um, and, and I don't know if anyone knows what snap on tools are, but they're sort of like the fancy tools. Um, you know, they're sort of the, um, I'm trying to think of a good motion design metaphor. Maybe they're like the octane of tools. I don't, that fell flat. That's not a good one. All right. Uh, edit that out. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so, uh, so, you know, you can see, I sort of played with a few different ideas here, a workshop, workshops can be organized, you can have machinery. And then I, I sort of like this idea of, you know, kind of riffing off of toolbox and being organized. You have little boxes with, with your tools in them, you know, if you're an organized person. Um, and so this is kind of what I latched onto and you can see that, you know, I kind of went down some you know, some twists and turns to get there. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, we could be talking about design principles. We could show grids. None of that ended up in the actual piece. I had to get all of these crappy ideas out to get to one idea that sort of worked for me. All right. So that's where I started. I started with that idea. And then because I knew we were going to need a logo to resolve to at the end that said workflow show, well, I needed you know, to make the logo first. Um, and I'm not a logo designer. So that was, that was a challenge. Um, one thing I did want to show everybody is when you arrive at a concept that you like, um, so in this case, toolbox, uh, if you get on Google images or, or if you just get on Google and you type in toolbox, it's going to show you a bunch of really boring photos of toolboxes that are not very inspiring. But if you get on Unsplash or Adobe stock or Shutterstock, you know, just any decent stock website, you'll see things that are more artfully photographed and they may give you ideas, something like this is pretty interesting to me. And you know, now that you've seen the final animation, you can probably connect something like this where there's these boxes that tools live in. And then at the end, the logo is sort of composed of boxes. This is sort of how my brain works. And the only way I know to get those connections to happen is through mind mapping and, and a lot of research like that. So next, I wanna hop into Illustrator. And I wanna show you, so we ended up with the logo here. Um, this font is Roboto Mono, which uh, I can't remember if it's a Google font or an Adobe font, but it's it's a free font. Um, and it's a mono font, meaning it's mono spaced. So all of the letters, they're basically designed to be equal widths, okay? Which makes sense if you kind of want to have a series of boxes like a grid and have everything fit, fit proportionally. So that's that's why I chose that typeface. And, and when you see the word mono at the end of a typeface, that's what it means, it means mono spaced. But you can see I tried a whole bunch of awful, <laughs> really terrible. Oh, those, those I mean, are amazing. I, <laughs> I almost I almost took some of them out because and, and, and so it's funny, too, because this is just sort of my curse. I'm not a great I don't think I'm a great designer, period. I'm a terrible logo designer and I always I can't help it. I start with the cheesiest, most obvious, dumb thing. So I'm like, oh, what if the O because so I started with this typeface because I liked the O. Uh, this is Nanami rounded. I think it, I think I bought this from my my fonts. But anyway, it's got this really beautiful like round O that looks very different than all the other letters. I thought that's really cool. Um, what if it was a gear? <laughs> and then um, yeah, and then uh, I didn't show it to anybody. But, um, <laughs> Until even today, still, you, nobody <laughs> likes it. Um, so anyway, so I played with that. I played with making it sort of like a hex nut. Um, I mean, this look. Come on, can we all just take a yes. moment? Yes to bask in this, <laughs> this is horrific. Um, okay, then I tried just doing some simpler things, you know, making it feel like almost like it, it like stamped from like a machine press or something. Um, I thought maybe something like that could work. Um, one thing I do wanna call out is that, you know, I, I'm not good at logos, which now is crystal clear to everybody, but there is kind of this process that I follow, which I actually learned from Mike Frederick, who teaches design boot camp and is on her start, which um, I, I don't, I don't know what that is yet. But um, that was anyway, a, a so, weird little cough there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so there there are ways to kind of get like even as as you know boring and plain as these are, there's like a logic to them and the way they're spaced and aligned and everything like that. Um, and it, it's one of the best things. And just quickly, because people are probably curious what some of the tricks are, um, the best thing I can say is try to find common measurement units between elements in your logo. You know, the distance between the bottom of the F and the top of the word show is actually half the di the hat of, half of the height of the word show. So you can sort of use little tricks like that to kind of fake logo design. So anyway, none of those really worked. And then um, I noticed just sort of playing around with the words workflow show that if, you know, there's 12 letters and you could stack them like this. And then, so then I drew boxes around them and I tried a few different arrangements. I thought maybe the sort of crossword puzzle looking thing might, might be cool. In the end, I liked this, but it felt just too plain. I wanted some color. So I went on uh, Palaton, which is a free website where you can generate colors. And basically what I did was I, I took our, um, our main logo colors, the red, green, and blue triangles, and I just pushed them a little bit to change them and make them a little more muted and less poppy, which then Kyle undid, which, <laughs> <laughs> which actually it looks great. I love it, um, to, to fit with our new branding. But, but I, originally I was trying to keep it muted. Um, and so... I built a palette uh, basically just off of sort of like a triad um, with a lot of different variations on the, um, you know, on the, the brightness values of the colors because I knew, okay, well, I've got 12 squares here to fill in. I've got these triangles. I've got all these little tools. I don't know what they are yet, but I'm, I'm going to figure that out. I'm going to need more than three or four colors. I'm going to need a bunch of colors. And so I used this tool to generate that. And I applied it, I tried a few different typefaces and ended up liking that one, okay? So once I had that down, next step is uh, thumbnails. So I, 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 I think people skip this step too because it's more fun to just like go right into Illustrator or Photoshop. It is. Or God forbid <laughs> after <laughs> don't do that. But, um, but if you can take the time, and this is literally like I scan this in because I, I do this on paper, you know, like a Luddite. Um, if you do little thumbnail sketches, what's helpful about them, and, and just so everyone has some context, this is like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So these are tiny little squares. I can't draw normally, uh, but in a tiny little square, there's really just not much detail you can add. And so it sort of forces you to focus on the big picture and on just the big movements. And, and you know, you can tell, like, I didn't even really know what these elements were going to be. I just knew, okay, I want something that's kind of like uh, horizontally, you know, long like this. And then I want uh, I want something to push down, and I kind of want to eventually divide the screen up like this. And that way, I can sort of expand all those squares out and get to the logo, all right? So I started with this idea. I looked at it, and I'm like, okay, this kind of works. And then I just iterated on it a little bit, and I started thinking about what those tools could actually be. So rubber hose, Ray, I mean, when you saw the intro, you may have actually recognized what those were. Hopefully that was the intent. <laughs> um, and then just some more generic things like a slider, a checkbox, um, and then, you know, sort of just trying to figure out, okay, how are the letters going to come in? How, how's all that going to work? And then I just did one more where I cleaned things up a little bit and I was a little bit more precise with it. And the reason I do that, you'll see in a minute, but basically I wanted to have some reference I could bring in to Photoshop where I actually did the boards for this. So here are the boards, uh, and I now when I do boards, I use art boards in Photoshop so I can see them all mm -hmm. up at the same time. Um, but this was three years ago, and I probably wasn't using art boards yet. But, um, so the way I did it then was I would have a folder for every board, and you can see I ended up with 12. Um, and so here's my thumbnail layer, and I think what I was doing, and it's funny because this happened so long ago, I have to like remember it. Um, so I think I probably uh, was cutting and pasting like in the individual frames I wanted to, to try and line them up. Um, so this is that frame where all four tools are up on screen. Uh, so we start here and I basically worked off of that palette and just tried to add variety to it. And I, I, I messed around with the colors as I was doing this. You can see there's a little bit of paper texture on there. Um, and already, because I'm mainly an animator, I, I'm always thinking about like screen direction and eye trace and how do we get from here to here. And so I thought, okay, we can start with a left to right movement, right? That's always fun. We can have this tool sort of start to build on, right? Obviously it's a rubber hose. And look at how boring this looks. Like in the final animation, there's all this follow through and it kind of curves up and there's more energy to it. When I'm designing boards, that's not that 
important, especially if I'm the one animating. If I'm selling this to a client, maybe I put a little more effort into it. But for me, I just wanted to know how big things should be, where they need to be on screen. So there's the first tool. Now the second tool can come down from above. And I picked that orange color because it's a nice sort of complement to the screenish one. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, we're, this is sort of representing ray dynamic color, which the interface, if you've used it, it's a bunch of little color swatches. So I thought maybe those could reinforce that downward movement, right? So there's sort of this, uh, this orange mat coming down and then kind of delayed. There's like these yellow squares. And boom, there's our second frame. And here I did sort of imply like this orange thing coming down is knocking this green one down a little bit, which is going to make this thing wiggle. Right. And so if you if you do boards the way we teach them in school of motion, you can almost see the thing animated. So watch really carefully when this orange thing comes down and Ooh. this kind of goes down and comes up. Right. That's kind of the idea. It makes your animatic a lot easier to work with, too, because then you can actually kind of see the animation. Uh, so then now that I've sort of established this is how things come into screen, I don't need to make multiple frames to show, OK, this is going to come in next. Then we're going to end up here. And look at that. That was the thumbnail sketch that I overlaid. And you can see I, I adjusted the size of things once I you know, was in Photoshop. By the way, this is a very big tip, probably one of the best tips I ever learned. Um, motion designers, especially if you work in After Effects you know, and you're working sometimes on a laptop and your comp window is this <laughs> big, you will have a tendency to make elements way too big, right? But if you realize that it might be this big on the, the screen it's gonna play on, well, now I'm not afraid to make these numbers really, really small. I'm not afraid to make like the lines extra thin and things like that. All right, then we're here, okay? And now I wanted to, to sort of imply like, okay, now there's gonna be this opening of extra squares and we're gonna sort of start to even things out. The letters are gonna drop down and boom, somehow we get to this. Um, now, one thing uh, that, that I always tell people and it's a really hard habit to break, especially if you're an animator is when I, kind of came up with this transition and I'm thinking, how the hell am I gonna do that? That seems like that's really gonna be tricky because everything's supposed to be touching and connected and it's springy, like how, just how's that gonna be rigged? I, I don't even know. And when I designed this, I didn't know the answer to that, <laughs> but I had the confidence to say, okay, well, worst case, I will hand animate all of those squares. I'd rather die than do that but hopefully I can figure out like an expression or find a tool or something. And I think that's a really good habit to get into as a motion designer is not to be afraid of designing things you don't know how to animate right now because it, you could figure it out. You could, you know, get on Twitter and tweet at Kyle Hamrick and ask him. <laughs> like, yes. I, I, uh, I like how you put a, a really positive spin on we'll fix it in post. Basically. <laughs> It's kicking the can to the animator, which works really well if you're not the animator. But if you are, I'm sorry. So anyway, so so that's that's where this ended up. Um, and we can also show you the animatic because yeah. th that was the next step. I cut the animatic and kind of gives you an idea. I'll go ahead and roll that here. Coming back. Here we are. Cool. So hopefully seeing that you can already, by the way, if you can hear footsteps, it's because my children are, are running <laughs> above me. Um, you know, I, I, if, if, if I did my job right, right. And, and imagine that you're the client and you've never seen an animatic before. Um, and I just showed you one. I would, I would obviously set it up. This is what an animatic is and this is why I'm showing it to you, but I didn't animate any of that, but I designed the board so that you kind of felt the animation implied in it. That's really, really helpful. And the best designers that I ever worked with would do that. And it was as much for the client as it was for the animator. Animators are good at figuring out how to get from A to B. Clients can't imagine that stuff. And so a lot of times it's nice to do even tiny little things like little follow throughs in the boards, because even if they're just flipping through it, you know, on, um, you know, a PDF or something, they can still kind of see the implied motion. Um, so yeah, so that's basically how I got from concept to logo, to actual, you know, thumbnails and the idea and how, how everything's going to move and then the design, the final boards. Um, and just to briefly show you and Kyle, you can jump in and, and pull, pull me off screen if I'm going too long. But, um, but in, in the end, it, it, this is what the After Effects project looked like. Um, and, you know, it was like not a crazy amount of layers, 113, right? Anyone, ever, anyone had more than 113 layers? Me. 
of course, right? <laughs> Everybody. So 113 layers, and then this is the final render comp. And really, the only, uh, a lot of the elements I actually pulled from the Photoshop file, um, the squares and all that stuff, I rebuilt what I had to. I actually just used rubber hose for this, so that, that was pretty easy. Um, and the only tricky part about the animation was sort of uh, figuring out how to get those squares to always touch and connect and stuff. I built a little bit of an expression rig for that. And in the end, that's what you got. Um, so yeah, that was, that. And, and, and then my hands came off of it. And I... Uh, <laughs> Kyle. But Kyle, you can show the final version of, of mine if you yeah, want to. Yeah, here's Joey's final. Super cool. Ta-da! So that is the story of Workflow Show. <laughs> Back to you, Kyle. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, when we uh, kind of realized that it would be a good name to reuse for this. Um, I had to go in and uh, I won't get too into this, but uh, it, it was a pretty nice clean project. It was interesting um, figuring out how to attach gradients to all of those boxes. Um, but fortunately, I'm pretty expression savvy and uh, I worked it out <laughs> eventually. Yeah, I'm glad it was you because <laughs> it got pretty gnarly in there. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, that was awesome. And uh, so I am also going to be talking through the pre-production of something. Um, I forgot to toss up this slide earlier, but as you have probably gathered, uh, this episode of Workflow Show is all about motion design, pre-production, and concepting. Um, and I am going to be showing off a tool called Milanote that I am a really big fan of. I've been using it for about a year here. Um, and I'm going to kind of talk through how I used that to do the planning for mine. Um, and I, I've been using this for like pretty much every project for the last mm, six months to a year now. Um, but I want to kind of tell you about Milanote and why I really like it and then show you how I used it to create the intro for another show that we're going to be announcing as I talk through this. So we'll come over to my screen here. There we go. So uh, Milanote, um, to put it in very crude terms, it's kind of a digital whiteboard, but it's really, really great for uh, people that do visual things like us uh, because it's just super visual. Um, and I believe there's a link that'll get uh, dropped into the chat if it didn't just already here, and it'll bring you right to this page. Um, they have this helpful little thing right up here at the top um, where you can kind of see how you might use this if you're in different roles or maybe different kinds of projects, different phases of production. Um, <clears throat> they kind of outline the different ways that you might use it. But as you can see from some of the examples here, you can bring in images, you can make notes, you can kind of align things, or it can also be, um, you know, you can have columns and, and very organized, or it can be super chaotic. Uh, you can have color chips in here, which is a feature I love. Um, and uh, you can use this for, you know, scripting, storyboarding. Um, it's very easy to kind of arrange things and attach notes to stuff. You can uh, caption your images. Um, they have some really nice uh, uh, templates for uh, the different things that I'll kind of show you here. Um, and another really cool thing about this is it's very collaborative. So multiple people can use a board simultaneously. So it's kind of like a Google Doc where you can just kind of, you know, pile on and all work through it at once. Um, they actually have this nice guide kind of for motion designers, my buddy Evan. Who's uh, that who's, handsome I devil? know. Um, <clears throat> That is my friend Evan Abrams. Uh, this this pre-production guide is really, uh, really well made, so I would check that out. Um, I'm just going to hop into a Milanote board here. Oh, what's this? Here's a note that I left for myself. Uh, we actually have three lifetime Milanote professional accounts to give away today. Um, there's a link that will get dropped into the chat here uh, where you can fill out a little form to sign up for that. And, um, oh, looky there. We've got collaboration happening already. Uh, yeah, Joey, I mean, maybe. I don't know. How many YouTube accounts do you have? You could probably trick me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is obviously just kind of a mostly blank board here. But um, so I've been using this for brainstorming, mind mapping, whiteboarding, um, gathering inspiration, making mood boards, scripting, storyboarding, planning, production, project management, um, collaboration and feedback. Like I have personally been using it for all those things. There's probably even more things that you can use it for. Um, so I just want to kind of show you, it's, it's very easy to use. You can just like grab a note and type some stuff right here. And then you can move your notes around. You can, uh, color code stuff. Uh, you can kind of drag around like how big things are. If I can, oops, grab it there. Um, and you know, just making notes, uh, cool. So it's a note taking app. Well, it's way more than that. Um, 
it's super useful to be able to, uh, uh, when you drop links in here, for example, um, you know, I usually just drag these in, but let's just try schoolofmotion.com. So when you drag links in here, it actually shows a preview of the link. Uh, by the way, when you link this to like Instagram posts or something for inspiration, it is super handy. Uh, you can do checklists, uh, you can draw lines to make arrows and stuff. Um, I'll show you boards in just a second. Um, as you saw, you can put things in columns. So you could kind of like make uh, lists that, you know, are all these things that might, uh, you know, kind of be related to one another. Uh, also, you can bring images in here, but it also has an unsplash image search right in here. So if you're uh, just kind of doing like a, you know, inspiration board or something, you can just drag stuff right out of here if you want. Um, if you were going to unsplash anyway, it saves you a step. Uh, you can obviously put your own images in here. Um, also, very helpfully, you can uh, even bring in animated elements like GIFs. Um, and you'll see in a minute here, um, I find that so handy when you're working on animation because there might be a little moment that, um, you know, it uh, you can see it, but to be able to see the thing move just like really, really brings home what it is you're trying to capture in that in that moment, right? Um, so let me show you. Is that from UHF? I it just absolutely to clarify. Is, is, yes. That... Okay, thank God. <laughs> I wonder how many people will get that reference. Well, it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, I don't know if Jake's watching, but uh, I, I know his. Oh, he'll get yeah. it. Yeah. Jake Bartlett drinks from the fire hose. <laughs> um, and then another thing that you actually saw already, uh, it's very collaborative. You can add comments um, and I can add my own. What do you think? And uh, this can kind of turn into a comment thread. Uh, you have different levels of sharing. So you could like feed this to your team and give some people editing access, some people just um, commenting access. Uh, so that's really helpful. Uh, Joey's typing, Joey's typing, Joey's typing. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna show you uh, creating a board and as part of this, hey, look, you can actually nest boards. Um, my amazing board. You can nest boards within other boards here and you can put them in columns and stuff. So you can kind of start seeing like, these are almost like pre-comps, uh, you know, or smart objects. You can nest these things uh, as, as deep as you wanna go. Um, and another thing too is uh, I love when you create a board, it uh, guesses an icon based on how you name the thing, but you can totally uh, you know, give it uh, its own icon name to, um, let's say planet here. So if we wanted it to be about space, you could do that. So when you create a blank board, they have all these templates. Um, these are kind of some like easy ones, but there's a, a ton in here as well. Um, I'm just gonna do this for like a character profile and they kind of show you roughly what it looks like. And you're like, yeah, I love this, perfect. So you use this and then it gives you that template, but it's all kind of blanked out so you can fill it in yourself without having to erase it. So uh, it's just really, really handy. Um, I feel like I kind of touched on, oh, so one thing I really, really love about this, it's clearly built with designers in mind. Watch this, I'm gonna delete these comments and then, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. So I'll just hit uh, Control or Command Z, undo. You have undo in here. Uh, also, once your board starts getting bigger and things are kind of off to the side, you can hold spacebar for that temporary hand tool to drag things around, just like in Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects. I love that because as boards start getting bigger, uh, you need that sometimes. Um, there's another good feature for that, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, I have a quick question, yeah, Kyle. Hit I, me. Okay, so <laughs> I, I've, I've never used Milanote mm -hmm. up until uh, like a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it's really cool. I'm really impressed with it. Now, I would use it, um, you know, to sort of share creative with clients. Yep. And then I'm also thinking probably like, you know, project management uh -huh. could, could even be done with it. Um, and so I'm just curious it, how, how easy is it to share these with clients? Do they need an account, all that kind of stuff? Um, so you can add editors right up here and you can uh, publish boards and uh, kind of whether you want to allow comments and stuff like that, you can uh, add a little message right there. You can password stuff. So uh, it's it's very friendly for for sharing in exactly that method. Nice. Yeah. Um, oh, and then the one other thing I wanted to say that I love, uh, again, clearly done with designers in mind, you can alt or option drag things to duplicate them, which is just like awesome. I mean, I don't know how often you'd want, you know, two pictures of the mountain, but um, a thing that I do all the if time. If it's Kilimanjaro. Right? <laughs> a thing that I do all the time, if I kind of have like, 
uh, you know, a note formatted the way I want, I might just drag it over here and then type in here and replace the text with something else. And then I've got, you know, the same size or color or whatever like that. So um, I just really love that. Uh, you can put files in here too. I haven't tried anything huge, but um, I've done a lot of posting like PDFs and little, uh, you know, self-contained After Effects files and stuff like that. Um, so myself and uh, Ryan Plummer, who is uh, part of the School of Motion team, we use this to kind of mind map like, uh, what are some of the things we might want to be doing with the School of Motion YouTube? Um, you know, what's going to make sense as live? Like we could talk about technology. You're watching Workflow Show right now. We could talk about people. Um, and I'm actually using this literally right now to run this show that you're watching. You can see your, uh, your questions, um, you know, uh, building up right there. I've got my show script. Uh, and then I use this heavily to uh, put together uh, all the pre-production concepting and, and some of the reviewing for this uh, spotlight, which is this other show that we're going to be doing here. Uh, the first thing I want to show you, zoom out, I left myself a handy message. Um, I intentionally spread this way out kind of much bigger than I normally would um, just for the sake of revealing it. But there's this handy zoom out thing here. So whoop. Uh, if you have a great big board, you can kind of get a, a big like bird's eye view of everything. Uh, and then you can um, zoom in with that button. Or actually, if you touch something, it'll zoom back into that point. Um, so the first thing I did, I knew that I wanted the show to be branded with the School of Motion look. Um, and so I dove into our brand book and I pulled out our colors and some of the like, uh, you know, ideas of logo variations and things like that and uh, just kind of went through and found some things that I liked, uh, thought were interesting, thought were things that I might uh, want to, you know, uh, reuse. Kind of took a look at some of our uh, social posts that we'd been doing, uh, just see if there's anything in there that felt really good. I really liked um, this photo that we added here um, uh, for the, when we started the COVID scholarship. Uh, I just really liked that treatment. Uh, and then I went through a couple spots. Um, we have this, uh, this, SAP innovation spot um, and our School of Motion manifesto video that are both by the amazing ordinary folk. Um, and both of them just kind of had some nice stuff. I kind of like some of the shapes uh, in this one, just kind of some cool ideas. And then obviously I thought it made a lot of sense to kind of reference the manifesto video um, since, you know, still School of Motion. So I kind of found some moments in there that I really liked. And um, I kind of been thinking about just a couple ideas. So this is just kind of, you know, gathering ideas. Um, and then I just kind of did some word association. I kind of saw like, oh, well, I've got, you know, these simple shapes here. Those kind of become like a person maybe with a little shading. Just kind of some ideas about what spotlight means. We'd already kind of been using the term to spotlight students and alumni. Um, and so then I was like, well, I'm going to need something as a promo image and kind of like the resolve, right? So I uh, just kind of started working through some ideas using some of those branding elements that we had. And then I was like, well, obviously, if we're talking about people, we probably need a picture of the person. So uh, I should add that in. So kind of worked through some some color versions there. Uh, got some feedback on Slack that I just posted in here to kind of keep track of it. Uh, you'll notice you can do emoji reactions in here as well. Uh, and then I also started with uh, just kind of doing some crappy little sketches to kind of get some ideas out. Like maybe we'll have this circle that's spotlight and it's kind of ballyhooing around. That's that kind of figure eight uh, thing. And um, the, uh, you know, maybe we're looking through people and then somehow that resolves to the end screen. I don't know. So I kind of sketched that out. I actually have this handy little scratch pad that is pretty close to 16.9. That's real nice for just knocking out crappy little things like this. Um, so I just kind of uh, worked it out a little bit, a uh, little bit cleaner here. Um, cool transition TBD. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I was like, well, that, that's probably the, the basic story beats. Uh, you'll see uh, Ryan later commented that these people maybe weren't quite the right direction. I'll get there in a second. Um, but I too made a little animatic uh, just directly in Premiere with these. Um, I had gone through and I knew this was going to be very music driven because um, it's pretty short. And I wanted to kind of use that to set my, uh, my energy, my vibe, you know. So I uh, went to Premium Beat and made a little playlist, p uh, ended up picking the song I liked. So here's that first animatic. Ooh, wow, pretty amazing, right? <laughs> um, so you can kind of see, you know, there's there's some story beats there at least. We're searching around, we find our person, and then we come to the resolve. 
So, um, you know, I kind of got some feedback. Uh, one of the other music choices I thought maybe was good for searching, but uh, Ryan was like, no, nah, that, that's kind of CSI. And as soon as he said that, it's like, yeah, there's, there's, that's not that. So this, this cool hip hop one uh, we really liked. And um, th this is Ryan Plummer, by the way. Uh, we just kind of had a conversation about um, what are maybe some, some good ways to kind of keep uh, evolving this. He had a couple things he really liked. Um, you know, this big pop uh, uh, that's in the manifesto video is maybe a good thing to kind of reference. And um, he really liked this bit with the uh, all these like app windows opening up here. Um, and uh, we kind of talked about like, well, maybe it's better instead of people if it's searching through like work, you know? So I just kind of mocked this up as something where we get like the glowy spotlights and I kind of split it into the two colors and this is like scrolling work. So yeah, cool. So um, from there, I had music and I had a thing and I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to go ahead and just dive into After Effects. So I just did a basically a sketch in there. So here's that first draft. So you can see there, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, again, kind of got the major story beats there, right? Um, I just have... Uh, you know, we're looking through art, it uh, kind of pops up, and uh, then we're at the thing. And, um, you know, I just kind of kept working through it. I, I, I gathered some more stuff in here. By this point, I was largely just refining stuff in After Effects and kind of um, occasionally throwing stuff to other people. Um, but kind of just keeping track of stuff in here uh, felt like a good idea. But um, eventually, I kind of worked that to uh, where I had... Uh-oh, my camera's not up. That'll be problematic in a minute, but I'll worry about it then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's future, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, we'll fix it in post, right? Um, so <laughs> we'll, uh, uh, I'll go ahead and play the final here. Uh, and as part of that, I'm going to be uh, announcing who our first guest is. So here is the final intro for Spotlight. Hey. I know her. Yeah, I would hope so. So we're back in two shot and my camera's not on. So um, I'm going to throw it to Joey for just a second here. Uh, I'll just vamp. Yeah, you'll just vamp. Um, I guess I could come back to my screen and talk for a second. I wonder if maybe my camera shut itself off, which would be problematic. But um, so well, it's yeah. OK. You know, there, there <laughs> yeah. was a, there was a point in the in the first blend conference where I'm trying to remember exactly what was going on. So I, so for those that aren't familiar, Blend is this it, it's amazing motion design conference um, put on by Wine After Coffee. Uh, it's in Vancouver. It's happened three times. I hope it happens a fourth time. I really do. But the first time, they uh, they needed somebody to act as like the MC, as the host. And um, I always the joke I always make is Andrew Kramer w was too expensive. Um, but um, no one thinks that joke's funny anymore. You know beat that dead horse. But uh, towards the end of it, they were handing out, I think, wine to everybody in the crowd. And there was like 300 or 400 people. So that took a while. And uh, and so I wasn't on stage, but all of a sudden, Jorge, who's one of the organizers and also runs Ordinary Folk, he came over and he gave me a microphone and he goes, just go up and talk. <laughs> I've never, you know, I don't really get stage fright. Um, I'm generally not a shy person, but that was probably the most scared I've ever been on stage. Walking up and I had to vamp. Um, this is way easier. So, um, hopefully that, I don't even know if that story was good, but hopefully it was enough time for Kyle to turn his camera back on. Well, it mostly was my camera's on. And then the, the autofocus, um, just kind of decided to, uh, mess itself up. So th this is unfortunate, but I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. So, uh, yeah. So as Kyle was saying the, you know, the, the, the whole idea behind these live streams is to play with different formats. It's a lot easier to do that live because obviously we could just mess up. Oh yeah. And you all forgive us, you know? <laughs> and we can Hopefully. totally butcher things. Uh, and it's fine though, because that's part of the, you know, that's kind of part of the charm of the live stream format. Um, but workflow show, you know, I think is is sort of meat and potatoes, what motion designers are really looking for. Like, okay, teach me something. I want to learn a new trick. I want to see this new tool. Um, you know, the spotlight series I, I think is gonna be really cool because one of the things that, I mean, internally we've been talking about for years, but we've just never really had the right venue for it, is it's it's just very common in our industry to focus on the cream of the crop, 
people you've all heard of, you know, and 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 uh, our podcast is, is really obvious there. Like we we feature people who have, you know, done award winning work or launched studios, you know, things like that. But we really want to focus on you know, like the entire industry, because when I was coming up in the industry and I would read Motionographer daily, almost obsessively, I would, uh, hey, look at that, I vamped successfully. Um, but just to finish my story, I would look at, at what was going on on Motionographer and I, and I knew all the names, right? I recognized all of them, I knew all their work. And I also recognized I was not there. <laughs> I was not yet there and there wasn't a place to sort of show me what it looks like when you're a civilian motion designer, you know, someone, someone uh, doing all the other 98% of work out there that doesn't get featured uh, on sites. Um, and so Spotlight's going to be both a combo of, you know, we get to talk about our, our amazing instructors. We can talk about great work. We can talk about alumni. Um, and it, it can be people, hopefully, that everybody can relate to um, and, and obviously bring a lot more diversity to, to mm -hmm. the type of artists mm -hmm. we're featuring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking forward to to that in in all these shows. Uh, just being able to kind of expand out who we're talking to, and um, yeah, hopefully introduce you to people that you don't already know. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay, so back on track here. I'm not sure if my camera overheated or what, but uh, yeah, I'll look into that later. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Since it uh, maybe got shortchanged a little bit, I want to put this back up. So next Friday at noon Eastern, uh, I'll be talking with Sarah Beth. And uh, <laughs> I guess we'll see if she can vamp as well as you can. <laughs> Hopefully that, that will happen. Yeah. You should... Uh, yeah, you should you should definitely like insert some, you know, intentional technical difficulty. There you just go. Just keep her on her toes. It's good. But now she's going to... If she I watches think, this... I think I saw her in the so. chat earlier, so... Don't don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> okay, so yeah. let's see. Uh, I believe that we got through uh, all of that stuff. Yep, all the meat of the show. And wow, it's ten till already. So we probably need to get to some of these announcements, huh? We've we've been stringing people along, but um, man, uh, you know oh, what? Yeah. I want to do a little bit of Q and A because I did promise that we would have that. So let's see um, if we have. Uh, yeah. Someone asked, "Can we get some brand, some School of Motion branded storyboard sheets?" Um, maybe. Actually, yeah. I, it's funny. I've actually thought about that because I made a little PDF for myself, and I thought, "I wonder." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can figure that out. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, the real question is, did Joey use rubber hose to animate the rubber hose? I did. Yes. Yeah. And I believe I saw Adam in the chat earlier, so uh, hopefully he, you know, was able to appreciate that. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. I like these uh, questions. Just, yeah, just kind of seeing uh, if there's anything else. Oh, what's the source of music for this project? Um, I'm guessing they're probably asking about yours. Is that also from Premium Beat? Yeah, so we've been really good friends with Premium <clears throat> Beat for years. Uh, there's actually tutorials I did for Premium Beat before School of Motion was was my full time gig, mm -hmm. um, and so we've always had a good relationship with them. So, and I, I love their library, so I use it. It's kind of my go to is to just use Premium Beat. It's it's oh, my go to on. as well. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think their music is great, uh, but also I love 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 their searching tool. And yes. um, even if I've had projects where I ended up going somewhere else uh, in the end for the music, I always start with Premium Beat just because it's so easy to search through their stuff, their their keywords and genres work really nicely, but um, they have uh, keyboard commands that let you just easily hop through um, everything, which is great. Um, yeah, and they, and they also show yeah. you, they show you the BPM of all the songs too, which is really yes. useful if you're a musician, you kind of know like what you're going for. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple specific Milanote questions, uh, some of which I don't know the answer to. Um, so I want to just encourage you, uh, I think I forgot to say this, when I was uh, showing this. So let me hop back over here and you can sign up for free. I believe you get a hundred notes uh, with a free account. So um, if you don't win today, go ahead and just check it out and see what you think. Um, I really love it. And uh, I have been using this for pretty much anything that is more than just like a tiny note. Um, I'm a big fan of Google Keep for like my personal shopping list and stuff, but anything work related has been going into Milanote for quite a while now. Um, really love it, really love it. Um, let's see, kind of trying to find like one more good question to finish off here. Um, 
Hmm. I knew there'd be a question about how to ri- how those rectangles were rigged. It's not yeah. a short <laughs> answer, though. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, we we kind of have we kind of both were like, well, we we can have a quick After Effects thing in here if we have time, and I don't think we have time. Uh, maybe we'll come back uh, again in a future show. We'll see. Yeah. Um, it's a lot I do, of code. I do see <laughs> I do see one Milanote question about does it have a, a handwriting function? Uh, they do not currently have like a free draw thing. Um, I would like that. You have little arrows that you can use, but um, it would be nice to maybe have like a self-contained free drawing that you can do just in a in a little uh, panel and then stick it places because you can make them transparent. But um, uh, not currently, but they have been pretty transparent about things that they are working on in the future. So uh, again, check it out and, and see if uh, maybe it's for you. Um, I feel like that's probably, with the other things we need to cover, probably it for Q&A. Uh, but we have a couple of announcements that we need to make. So I feel like maybe we should uh, dive into that. Let's what do, do you it. think? Let's yeah. Do so do you want to say anything or you want me to just drop this first one? Um. So we have been working on classes for a long time. So in some cases, years. <laughs> um, our classes take a really long time to make. If you've taken one of our classes, you probably understand why, because they're so dense. Uh, if you've taken some of our newer ones, the production value is like way higher now. And I mean, think about like how much, how much effort goes into every lesson. I wish I could, I wish I could sort of plant a seed in everyone's brain to know like how, how many hours have been slaved over like what's the name of the fake client? How do we make a fake script for a fake, you know, uh, explainer company or something like that? Um, so I know that our classes take a long time, and there's one in particular that I know a lot of people have been waiting for um, years, actually. Um, so Kyle is going to announce two classes that will be available in the fall session, the upcoming fall session. I'm really excited about both of them, uh, and they're very, very different. Um, so Kyle, I don't know how, how do you want to do the reveal. You want to just play the, play the uh, intro? yeah. So I'm gonna drop this one first. Ooh. So those those gunner. Gunner folk are pretty, yeah. pretty good, aren't they? Oh That's a pretty goodness. amazing video. Yeah. And uh, the, the course, uh, the little bit that I've seen about it, um, I'm super excited and I don't even really use it. <laughs> I, I still need to take base camp, so I'm, I'm not ready for Ascent yet. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> e- EJ's been slaving over Ascent um, for many months. And uh, so... You know, there's going to be more information coming out on a sales mm-hmm. page. You'll be able to check out all, you know, get all the details. They actually um, just dropped it in the chat. Oh, right on. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, good timing. It's almost like we coordinated with our almost. marketing team. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's really meant for if you've taken Basecamp and you want to go to the next level, like you saw mm-hmm. the intro. I mean, I think the, the idea behind that intro is like you, you can make something just like that after you take a cent because it gets into you know, basic rendering concepts that are universal across all of these new renderers that come out. It's actually, you can kind of get away with not knowing that stuff for a while, but if you want to start getting into photorealism, you really need to understand samples and, you know, and, and all of that stuff. Um, you know, uh, it gets into, um, you know, some more simulation and rigging and adding 2D to your 3D. Uh, there's some amazing sort of guest artists that have contributed, you know, elements and things like that to it. Um, it's, really incredible and and from what i've seen it looks like it's just as kooky and weird and fun as as base camp um you know especially if the uh, if the intro gives us any any idea um so i i am actually really excited and i if i have time maybe i'll i'll sneak in to a uh, next session <laughs> yeah uh i have a little bit of um a little bit of language from ej himself uh here actually uh and uh as you said the the videos by gunner and sono sanctus did the the audio on that um, so EJ said, this course is for anyone who wants to take the next step in their 3D career. We'll be talking about stuff like universal render concepts, redshift rendering and materials, mixing 2D with 3D, advanced MoGraph techniques, rigging dynamics, and a lot more. Sounds Perfect. awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so as you saw, uh, the the course page for that is actually live right now. That will be available for this next coming fall session. And uh, the link was dropped in the chat. We can probably drop it again if it uh, feels appropriate. Um, but we actually have another course to yes. introduce here. Yeah, uh, do you want to say I, anything? Or? Yeah, well, I, I actually saw, I was kind of lurking before we started the live stream. <laughs> and I saw someone, people were guessing what we were going to announce. Were. And someone guessed correctly, actually. Um, so this class has been in the works, I'd say at least three years. Uh, I, I honestly don't even remember when we started doing it. It's, I mean, it went, I think we started it when there was like four or five people at School of Motion and now there's 20 or 50, 20, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but um, you know, one of the things that we, we realize is still very light in our curriculum is design. And, you know, it was kind of it's, it's kind of interesting, this whole live stream, like the, the idea of it was like coming up with ideas and designing them and making the design work and being really intentional with your design choices. And so we have design boot camp, which is a very hard class. It's always been sort of like an intermediate design class, really project based. And it kind of throws you into the deep end and assumes, you know, a lot of things that maybe you don't know. Um, and a lot of students do great with no design experience, but we always realized we needed something to help <laughs> give people who are truly design beginners a, a leg up before they get to design boot camp. And so finally, we are going to be launching design kickstart in the fall session. Yeah. Very exciting. All yeah. Right. Let's drop this trailer. Lovely. <laughs> so that video uh, is by Alan Lasseter and uh, again, Sono Sanctus uh, doing the audio. West yeah, <laughs> what a dream team, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of, my, one of my favorite parts actually of, of doing new classes is uh, looking at the intros <laughs> once they're done. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I, I know you already said some stuff. I actually met, uh, Oh, and Mike Frederick is again the instructor, as we should probably say. Uh, I actually met Mike for the first time in Boston this past uh, uh, fall and probably talked to him for about an hour about how excited he was about <laughs> this course. So uh, by proxy, I'm super excited. Um, but uh, I have some I have some language from Ryan Summers, our creative director as well, that uh, just kind of helps like put everything in a nice little package here. So uh, one thing that he wants to make clear is that like this, if you've already taken Design Bootcamp, uh, there's still a ton, ton of value in uh, taking this Kickstart, uh, despite what you know the name might imply. So he said, Mike put together a course to give someone just getting into design everything in italics that they need to know. It's a very hands-on experience. It's jam-packed and dense with material. It's exhaustive in all the best ways. And as hard as it is to believe, it's bigger and better than Design Bootcamp. It dives deep into the DNA of design. How about that alliteration, huh? And <laughs> that should be very palatable for veterans that missed out on design as they found their way into MoGraph. That's me, that's me. <laughs> yeah, it gets into a lot of concepts that we just didn't have time to get into in Design Bootcamp. And, and a lot of those are sort of foundational. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like it's, it, and, and what's, What's really cool about it to me is that it's design taught in the context of motion. Mm -hmm. So it's not in a vacuum where if you're doing color studies, you're not doing it for no reason on, you know, like a circle on a, on a background. Um, we always try to do it in the context of like a client brief, something you will actually be doing professionally. Um, so I, I've watched probably half the lessons in Design Kickstart and uh, it's amazing. It's um, it really is. It, it's like the missing piece. I feel like um, to really help our students get better at design and, and feel more comfortable when they eventually get to design boot camp. Awesome. Well, I know yeah. uh, actually my first experience with School of Motion, like officially, was taking design boot camp as a student, and it was probably like the most helpful butt kicking that I've uh, had in recent memory. Um, and it, yeah. it stepped my stuff up so much. So uh, I'm super pumped to see uh, everything that's in this course. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. <laughs> I have access to look awesome. at it now. And uh, yeah, um, just haven't had time. Um, okay, so we have one last announcement to make, and then we're going to be wrapping this up. Um, so that last announcement is, <clears throat> uh, oh, Crucial detail, Design Bootcamp, 
Design Kickstart, just in case we didn't say this, is also available this coming fall session. Uh, the course page is not live quite yet, but it will be very soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and uh, that'll be up soon. So uh, speaking of fall session, uh, our last announcement is that our Community Inclusion Scholarship is now open right now, right now. We'll have a, actually a link dropping in the chat here. Um, it will be open for this fall session. Uh, we've done it a couple times here. School of Motion has a mission to break down the barriers to learning, mastering, and working in motion design. We've developed this scholarship to try and help expand the community to include more underrepresented and historically oppressed groups. If you think you'd be a good fit for this scholarship, we absolutely encourage you to apply. If you know someone else who'd be a good fit, uh, please share the link, spread the word. Um, we, uh, yeah, this is a, a great thing that we started up a couple months, months ago and uh, been really happy to be able to continue doing it here. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really, really important to us. And mm -hmm. it's been, uh, honestly one of the most rewarding things to be able to help someone learn how to do this stuff mm -hmm. that maybe wouldn't have had the opportunity without the scholarship and you know we're we're, we're looking at ways of, of expanding and, and doing other things too because really that i mean it you know every company when you get to a certain size you have to write a mission statement and it seems cheesy at the time but we you know i don't even remember when we wrote that i mean it's been a few years now um and it's always good to go back to it and be like, are we doing that? Are we actually breaking down those barriers? Or are we just saying we are? And so this is us trying to put our money where our mouth is. And um, so absolutely, like, apply, send it to people that you think might benefit from it. Um, we want to fill all of those spots. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and one last thing we need to do before we wrap up is announce some winners for our Millinote giveaway. Uh, I've got three names right in front of me here. And uh, since you had your emails entered, we'll be able to... Um, We'll send those to Millinote and they will get in touch with you with uh, information to uh, log into your uh, account. Uh, so mm -hmm. I have Tahira K. Adams, Amy Lysiar, and Karina Okajima. So congrats to you three. And I hope that you love Millinote. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, it'd probably be great to, you know, if you want to tweet out how much you uh, love using it after you get a chance for it, whatever. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Um, so uh, let everyone know, uh, yeah, what you think. Uh, and can I say, I say too before we, because I know we're <laughs> starting to land the plane, but I want to say, um, you know, the School of Motion team has been uh, saying we should be doing live streams for a really long time. And now, uh, especially with Kyle on board, we have, you know, obviously, uh, hopefully everyone's noticed how nice the presentation is. That's all Kyle. He like designed it and set it all up and he figured out how OBS works and all uh, of that. Especially when my um, camera shut off. <laughs> Yeah, well, I my favorite part. Gonna mention that, but <laughs> I was gonna give you that one pass. We'll talk about that after. But, uh, but what what I want to know is, um, you know, is this format useful? Mm -hmm. What kinds of things would you all like to see? Um, you know, do you like the amount of interaction we had? Do you want more interaction? Um, you know, because that's the cool thing about this is mm -hmm. we can tweak it, we can tailor it to make sure it's as useful as possible for everybody. Yeah. So please let us know in the comments. Email us tweet at us, TikTok at yeah. us, but only for another yeah. 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's the, what's the Instagram thing that just came out the or they they basically clone Reels, TikTok? Uh, I think. Yeah. yeah. Reels, yeah. yeah. Um shoot a reel at us. There you go. Uh, <laughs> well, I did just see a couple people saying that they really enjoyed this, so that's good. Uh, I will say that generally, uh, we'll have a little bit more time for Q&A and interaction. We just uh, you know, we packed a lot into this episode because we had a lot of things to announce. So, um you know, uh, especially when we have guests on and stuff, we're really looking forward to uh, showing off a little bit of their stuff, but also really giving you the opportunity to interact with them and ask questions and uh, kind of like help pick apart their work uh, if that's what we're featuring, you know, whatever. So um, as uh, you know, to that point, again, just wanted to remind you that next week we'll be talking with Sarah Beth Morgan. Uh, we'll be on at noon Eastern uh, right here on the same channel, obviously. Um, and I know some people wanted to see that workflow show intro again. So you're in luck because I also have it <laughs> planned as the outro. Um, so Joey, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? I just, uh, thank you, Kyle, for uh, doing an amazing job with our first sort of you know grown up live stream. Uh, I think this was awesome and I hope everyone enjoyed it, learned something. And we'll definitely be doing more of these in the future. Sure. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, 
uh, yeah, I, I love doing this stuff and it's great uh, having everyone tune in. I saw we have uh, like 500 people here right now, which is awesome. So um, I'm nice. really looking forward to what the future of uh, all of these is. And as I said earlier, we really would love to have your uh, suggestions. Let us know what you would like to see on this. Um, you know, if there are tools and plugins that you want us to feature, if there are people you want us to feature, uh, let us know. You can drop them in the chat. You can send it to our uh, support uh, chat on the um, on the School of Motion site. Uh, let us know because we want, we want to make this what you want it to be. So uh, I think with that, we'll wrap this up and uh, let's drop this intro outro. I told my daughter I'd dab. I can't do both, but I'll, I'll try. Oh, I thought you were going to transition I'll, I'll out. Now, now it's like an awkward dance. <laughs> well, that's I'll, better. Okay. I'll practice that more. <laughs> All time. right. Yeah, I apologize.